Our Milky Way galaxy is an amazing place. The Milky Way galaxy. All right, so what's up with the Milky Way galaxy? Well, first of all, uh, let's be very clear. Our solar system consists of our sun and then the planets that orbit around it. So there's one star in our solar system. The Milky Way galaxy contains several hundred billion suns, several hundred billion stars, all held together by gravity, all orbiting around each other. It's an enormous, enormous object. So we got the Milky Way galaxy. We have several hundred billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Uh, took astronomers a while to map this out and figure out exactly where we were. So we have several hundred billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy, all held together, all orbiting around each other. Our sun orbits around our Milky Way galaxy about every 200 million years, carrying the solar system with it. So that's, so that's the structure. Overall, if I could see it from far away, of course, we're right in the middle of it, so that makes it rather hard to kind of figure things out. But if I could see it from far away, what would it look like? What would I see? Well, I would see that um, if I did a cutaway sort of view, I would say there, there, there are two kind of main parts to the Milky Way galaxy. There's the spheroidal part of our galaxy and there's the disk. So the spheroidal is kind of blobby sort of shaped. It's kind of irregular in all sorts of directions. And then there's this flat disk sort of thing going on like this. So we have the disk and we've got the spheroidal thing, spheroidal part. This includes the central, the, the, this blob thing at the central, which is called the bulge at the center of our galaxy. And then it just kind of smoothly goes out from there. There are spheroidal stars scattered all the way around our galaxy. And then the, uh, the globular clusters, these balls, tightly packed balls of several million stars, are included in the spheroidal population. And so the, 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 the outer parts of this we generally call the halo of our galaxy. So the spheroidal part of our galaxy includes both the bulge and then kind of smoothly blends out into the halo. So that's what's going on. So I look at this Milky Way galaxy, several hundred billion stars. You've got the disk um, and then you've got the, 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 the spheroidal thing, the bulge and the halo. So what do we know about this? What does it look like? What are the different parts of our galaxy? Well, the first thing we notice is that when I look at spheroidal stars, when I look at these spheroidal stars, first of all, just in terms of motion, the spheroidal stars are orbiting in all sorts of different ways, just like a swarm of bees. Every single one going every single different direction. So the spheroidal motion, motion, is irregular. On the other hand, in the disk, things are orbiting more or less in a flat sort of way. And then as they orbit around in this flat disk, stars like our sun kind of bob up and down through the disk, kind of like, uh, like merry-go-round horses going up and down, but kind of more or less confined to the disk. So the spheroidal motion is irregular. The disk here, uh, in the disk, it's kind of circular uh, within the disk and going up and down, up and down. So motion within the disk is a lot more organized than motion within the spheroidal population. What else can we do? What else can we see about these two different parts of our galaxy? We also see that when we look at spheroidal stars, they tend to be yellow, orange, red. Whereas if I look at group, uh, groups of uh, disk stars, groups of disk stars tend to be blue. What's that all about? That, what's that's going on there? Let's, let's think about that just a little bit, because that tells us something really, really, really interesting. So we have the disk, and groups of disk stars, disk, disk stars tend to look blue. Well, we have the spheroidal, spheroidal, uh, which where things tend to look, you know, orange, yellow, orange, red. What does that mean? Well, first of all, if I see blue stars, I know blue stars are young because blue stars don't get old. Blue, they tend to look blue because there are hot blue, upper blue, upper main sequence stars, upper main sequence. And these, by, these must be young. We know how nuclear fusion goes inside of stars. Blue stars don't get old. So if I see blue stars, I'm looking at young stars, stars that formed recently. So that means there must be ongoing star formation, star formation. New stars are being born today in the disk of our galaxy. On the other hand, when I look at the spheroidal stuff, I see orange and red. Okay, so we're talking about cool stars. We're talking about lower main sequence stars. 
So these, if, I, if I'm looking at a group of stars and I see only the lower main sequence and I don't see any of these hot blue stars, that means, aha, I'm looking at an old group of stars. Because remember, when you form stars, when you form a group of stars, you form a full main sequence. This, this seems to be a universal sort of thing. When you've got a big giant cloud of gas and dust, you're going to form a bunch of stars, you form everything. You form lots and lots of little low main sequence, you know, low mass stars, and then all the way up to a few of these enormous high mass stars. The high mass stars become your hot upper main sequence stars, the low mass stars become your cool lower main sequence stars, and you have the full main sequence between them. So if I see blue stars, it's like, aha! These stars formed recently. Blue stars don't get old. They must be young. On the other hand, spheroidal stars, I'm looking at those and I don't see the blue stars, so that means I'm looking at old star populations. Lower main sequence, so old groups of stars. Now the truth is, in the disk, in the disk, there are lots of lower main sequence stars. There are lots of these red and orange and yellow stars, stars like our sun and then cooler and smaller. There are lots of those. But blue stars dominate the light. You know, the blue stars are rare, but they give off colossal amounts of light. Thousands and tens of thousands of times more light than the lower main sequence stars are. So even though in the disk there are way more of these red, orange, low main sequence, lower main sequence, low mass stars, there are way more of those than there are the blue stars. But the blue stars give off so much more light that they tend to dominate the light. When I see a group of disk stars, it's going to look blue because that small minority of young blue stars dominates the light that I see. So what this means is the disk of our galaxy contains young stars, stars that are forming right now, today. When I look at the spheroid, I, there are no young stars forming today. If stars were forming today, you'd get a full main sequence, which includes a few of those hot blue stars, but we don't see any blue stars at all in spheroidal populations, which tell me that this is older. And this tells me the history of the Milky Way. Okay, now, now we know what happened. And when we think about the, the, the patterns, it kind of makes sense. So the spheroid formed first. So the timeline line of the Milky Way. What happens? What happened in the timeline of the Milky Way? Well, first, the, the, the protogalactic cloud, the big cloud of gas and dust that our galaxy formed from, must have been kind of blobby, irregular, with things moving all sorts of different directions. You know, spheroid forms. Spheroidal stars form. You know, it's not organized yet. Disor you know, it's kind of a round blob shape. And then... Then, after a while, okay, so those, those stars form, they get done forming, there's a nice generation of stars, lovely, beautiful, glorious, and then gravity and friction kind of collapse things down into a disk. Two disk forms, and stars are still forming today. And so there's the history of our Milky Way galaxy just based on the ages of the stars in it. These group of stars are exclusively old. This group of stars include younger stars, so the older stars must have formed first. So initially, and it kind of makes sense logically too, you know, the Big Bang happens, it fills the universe with all this gas, the gas form, you know, gravity pulls it together to make this irregular blobby Milky Way. You see it form the spheroidal stars, they're going all every way, and then gradually friction smooths it all out, organizes it into this disk, which is now, which is now where ongoing star formation takes place. So that takes place a little bit later later in the history of our galaxy, and that's where stars are forming today. And that's where the most exciting stuff in our galaxy is going on. The most exciting part of our galaxy is the star gas star cycle. Because, C-Y-C-L-E, there we go, because this is why we exist. This is why we exist. We would not exist. You would not exist. I would not exist. Human beings would not exist if not for the Milky Way. Because, imagine that uh, there was no Milky Way. Galaxies did not form. Stuff is just randomly scattered throughout space. Well, space is big. So what happens is the Big Bang happens. It fills the universe with hydrogen and helium and basically nothing else. You can't make people out of hydrogen and helium. So what happens next? Well, then, uh, you know, okay, so then stars form. You, you, and and after, shortly after the Big Bang, you know, you could form some stars. Nice big stars, they form, they make some stuff inside them, you know, they do their nuclear fusion, they go from hydrogen and helium to, to nitrogen and carbon and oxygen, all these other wonderful elements, and then the big ones explode and spread their guts out into the universe to be what? To be spread out. And the universe, remember, the universe is expanding after 
after the Big Bang. And so it gets bigger and bigger, and there would not have been, gravity would not have been strong enough to form a second or a third generation of stars without galaxies. Unless all the gas gets organized, pulled together into these galaxies, we can form these disks. Disks are places where it's relatively dense. Now, there's not a whole lot of gas out in space, but there's a whole lot more gas in the space in a disk in a galaxy than there is out in intergalactic space between galaxies or out in the halo. So that's why we exist. We exist because this star gas star cycle, which takes place in the disk of our galaxy. And so what happens is because this cycle is going on, that allows us to exist because this cycle is going on. So what happens is you have cool, cool gas. Gravity pulls it together to make stars. Gravity pulls it together to make stars. Stars do nuclear fusion in their cores and create new elements. Fusion, fusion in cores. And then material from these stars is recycled. This is recycled either as supernova explosions, sudden events, or more slowly to produce planetary nebula around the lighter mass stars. So, so these, these there are two ways to be recycled. But then this releases hot gas into space, either via supernova or by planetary nebula. You know, you're making a, you're making a white dwarf sort of thing. Both of these put hot gas back out into space. And then what does the hot gas do? It cools. It glows. It gives off light energy. Making stars is kind of like a war between heat pressure and gravity. And as long as there's more heat pressure, there's more thermal energy, then that will defeat gravity and prevent gravity from pulling things together. And so what happens is the hot gas has to cool. How does it cool? It glows. It gives off light. And so we see these nice, beautiful, glowing supernova remnants, and we see these nice, beautiful, glowing planetary nebulas, and they're giving off energy. And they're giving off energy. They're giving off their heat. They're giving off their thermal energy getting cooler and cooler and cool cool initially the hot gas is ionized ionized gas is gas that's so hot where electrons are broken free from individual atoms so you got this soup of free electrons and nuclei bouncing around it cools until it forms atomic gas atomic gas now it's cool enough that now your this individual electron sticks to this individual atom and so now you have atoms rather than just you know ionized mess and then it cools even more to make molecules cools and this makes the cool clouds of gas and dust and this these are these usually have molecules where now it is so cool that atoms begin sticking together. That's what a molecule is. A couple of atoms stuck together, and the atoms are now moving so slowly that they stick together, and now it's finally getting cool enough that gravity can take over. Now there's not enough thermal pressure left that gravity can pull it together and make a new generation of stars, and this is constantly going on. We're about a third generation system. Most of the atoms in your body were part of probably about two stars in our universe since the Big Bang. Now it's not a perfectly efficient process. We know stars leave behind also black holes, and neutron stars and white dwarfs and so that material is locked away and then it's lost to the process that that it, we don't see things going on there but this is constantly going on in our Milky Way galaxy and perhaps most excitingly when we study the orbits of stars in the center of our Milky Way galaxy we also see a supermassive black hole massive black hole this is indicated by the orbits of stars near the center and occasional bursts of x-rays x-rays too when we study these stars they're stars in the center of our galaxy orbiting around something at fantastically enormous speed they're orbiting around there at colossally fantastic speed we take Newton's laws of gravity Newton's version of Kepler's third law we calculate ooh there's an object in there with millions of times the mass of our sun and it's not a star, and what could it be? Well, as far as we know, the only thing it could be is a black hole, and then when hot gas falls into it, it gives off a burst of x-rays, and so we find that there is this beast at the center of our Milky Way galaxy.